Hi y'all and welcome back to my channel. Uh, remember to please uh, like if you like this video, give it a thumbs up down there, push the like button and uh, feel free to leave any comments. I welcome all comments and I'll read them. I need the comments here though on YouTube. Um, you can post them on the Mammy Murray's Facebook page, but also please, if you have any to uh, post them on here, right under this video here on YouTube. All right, and also remember the contest. Once I, once I reach 100 subscribers, I will be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card, so make sure you share. Every time you share, you get entered, and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe, and you get it entered five times, okay? Now, when you do share or you subscribe, you need to comment under the video, shared or comment subscribe. Okay, so I listed in my Facebook page about do you have any traditions for New Year's Eve? Of course, many of us have New Year's Day traditions such as black eyed peas and um, something green and some kind of pork, you know, about all the good luck it's supposed to bring. Well, in my family, what we did uh, when I was raising my children, my husband and I, we would every New Year's Eve make just like different appetizers for our meal that we would eat at night. It would typically be like the, you know, the cocktail meatballs with the chili sauce and grape jelly. I would do some chicken wings. Um, I would do, usually I would have some shrimp with the cocktail sauce. I would make wontons and egg rolls. And then sometimes I would do what I called a vegetable pizza, which is, which is something I can do later on in another video. Um, trying to think if there was anything else. Uh, I'm at my daughter's right now, and so I'm going to be doing a couple of mine. I'm going to be doing the uh, wontons. Uh, she's going to be doing some spring rolls, and I'm going to be doing the chicken wings. And then tomorrow for New Year's Day, I will be cooking the black eyed peas with a little bit of ham in them and some uh, mix of turnip and mustard grains, all right? So today I'm gonna get started in, with the crab rangoon. Now, if you've never had crab rangoon or if you've eaten it and you've never made it and you're not sure exactly how, I'm going to show you how today. So I'm going to bring you closer so you can see. Get you down here into the mixer. All right, let me see. This isn't my mixer, so I think its head tilts back. It's different than mine. It's like my old one was. First thing we want to do is we want to take some softened cream cheese. Leave that out at room temperature for a while, okay? I'm looking for a spatula. You want it to get soft. So I'm going to open it up. Turn it toward the mixer so you can see that a little bit better. <clears throat> and it's just a, what are these? Eight ounce package. That's what I thought it was, but I could not remember for sure. I could. My daughter and I were just talking about how they have made some packages and cans of things smaller. And I know I was talking about the tuna and I think the six ounce got stuck in my mind and I started to say that's what this was, but I knew that did not sound right. But who knows, by now they may have, you know, changed it down to six ounces or they probably will in the future. All right, so you're going to put your eight ounces of cream cheese in there. And don't let any of that cream cheese go to waste. Scrape out that paper and get it all off the paper. The price of groceries nowadays, we sure don't need any of it to go to waste. All right, put that little bit on there. To that, we're going to add some lump crab meat. And you want to take the can. This is a 4 and 0.25 ounce can of crab meat and you want to drain it really, really well. There's usually a little paper on here. You make sure you drain it well, remove that paper. Then you put it into 
the mixer with the cream cheese. But you want it drained as dry as you can get it. If it's wet, it's going to mess up your crab rangoon. Then I have some green onion that I chopped up, uh, about three stalks. Chop it up pretty finely. Actually, you know, it's really just your preference too. You may want chunkier pieces. That's a lot of things with cooking. It's a lot of it's just your preference. Then we're going to sprinkle in some garlic powder. I'm going to lay that to the side. And I just sprinkle it until it looks about right to me. Let me see, that's, yeah, it looks about right. All right. And then we want to add a little pepper. I did not get that out for you. And I'm actually going to use white pepper. Now, if you don't have white pepper, black pepper, or you don't have put any pepper, your choice again. All right. I'm going to mix it up and I'll pause you while I mix it up. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like in there. You can kind of see that. You just want to mix it up really, really well. And I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to assemble the wontons. All right, y'all, I'm back. I put the mixture in a small bowl because that would be easier for me to you know, get it out than trying to get it out of the mixture. I have the wonton wrapper, so make sure it says wonton. And a little bowl of water. I have me a cookie sheet to assemble them on. You could use, uh, you know, a plate, a platter, anything you want. You could even do it directly on the table if you want. I don't do that. But the first thing I did was I took a cookie sheet I'm going to show you here and I just spread a little bit of uh, cornstarch over it because when we after we make these up after we assemble them and make them up we're going to put them in the freezer for an hour or two and until they're frozen we want to flat flash freeze them then we take them out and pull them in a ziploc baggie then put it in the freezer until we're ready to cook them and that really helps a lot with the cooking process if you do that first. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bring you down to uh, see here. And let me see how far I can take you. Okay, that's good. All right. First thing we're going to do is take our wonton wrapper. We're going to set it here. We will take a spoonful, you want like the teaspoonful instead of the tablespoonful that, you know, comes with your silverware. That's about how much you want to put on it. And then you put that in, right in the middle and I'm using another spoon to push it out. That way you don't get it all over your fingers. Then I take my finger, put some water and you could use a little brush, but my hands are clean, I did wash them. And you put that along the edges of the wonton wrapper. All right, so next you have that step done. You're going to take it from corner to corner, like catty corners, like that. And you want to seal the edges. Make sure they are sealed really, really well. You're gonna have to kind of like pinch them. If any of your stuff starts to come out, just kind of push it back in. If you put too much in it, it's definitely going to come out. So you don't want that spoon heaped up real high, which I think I did get a little bit too much in this one. But seal those edges really good. Now you can leave it like that and you can fry it like that, depending on how crispy you want your edges. Uh, then we want to take some more water and about halfway down on the edges then you're going then the, if you don't want it like this then you can do the way I'm doing it now and bring this over and bring this one over where you have this shape 
Do you see that? Show it a little bit better. And you can leave it like that, or you can do like I do and bring this one down. Because I don't like all those little pointy things sticking up. That one's still trying, mixture's trying to come out. All right, let me do another one with you. And take my wrapper, and then when I do it, when I put it on the cookie sheet, I space them out, you know, I don't have them touching. Do not have them touching. I'm going to take a spoonful. Remember, not a huge spoonful. Just an average size spoonful. Put it in the middle. with the edges bring it across catty corner like a triangle press your edges down real good to seal it and that's one way you can just cook it that way or you can go about halfway down and, or actually, you can go all the way across. I've done that before, too. So either way, and bring that first corner down then put these over. And that kind of looks like a little envelope. And like I said, that's the way I like to do it the best. And then just lay it down. What I do, since this side is really wet, that's the side I put up where the folds are. I put that side up. And then kind of put the dry side down. If you can show you here. See how I did that? All right, we're going to work on some more. And when we get done, I'm going to stick it in the freezer and leave it there until we get ready to cook them later this evening. Um, and I will bring you back when we get ready to cook them. All right? Okay, y'all, I'm back and I'm getting ready to fry the crab rangoon. So I'm going to turn you around here and uh, show you what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to take probably about four or five of them. I will put them in the basket. Now, this fryer is made different than mine is, but I guess it's basically still the same. I think, yeah, five is good enough. And just set it down. And let them fry for two, three, four minutes. I, like I said, this is not mine, so I'm not exactly sure how this one works, how long it will take. And you kind of want them to float up to the top. I know you really can't see down in there because I have this plate here. Let me see if I can bring it over. There you go, so now you can see how they're cooking. Okay, set that back down. Are y'all all getting prepared for your New Year's Eve? I hope so. Hope you're having some goodies tonight. Uh, I would like to say though, if you drink, make sure you drink responsibly. Do not drink and drive. Find, have a designated driver or get someone to drive you home. Hey, these are starting to get brown. I want to find something to kind of move them around with a little. You have a slotted spoon over here. Down here. Oh, that Thank you. Hey, I do like to take the spoons sometimes and just move them around a little bit. Like sometimes one side will start to get brown and another side will not. So I just kind of like to stir them. But you have to be very gentle about it so you make sure that you don't tear them open. Let you see what they look like here. 
See those? Nice and brown and pretty. Okay. Oops, it went wobbly on me for a minute, didn't it? Okay, I'm going to get these out on the plate. I'm going to take the towel and let them drain. Right, and I'll show you down here what they look like. Now, they're just way too hot for me to do a taste test. That's what they look like. All right, y'all, that's the end of it. There's all you do. Make them quick, it's easy, it's simple, so try them if you've never made them before. And y'all have a wonderful New Year's Eve, and may God bless you in the upcoming New Year. And, you know, remember to just always put him first. When my husband was living, we would always end the New Year and start the next New Year with prayer. And that's really a good way to end and begin. Um, just remember to always season your cooking with love. Cook for the ones you love, all right? I'll see y'all next year. Bye-bye.